Hi, my name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year of teaching. Today, I thought that I would take you guys along for a day in my life. Today is Monday, April 29th. And um, yeah, it's just a typical Monday for me on our Mondays. If you've never seen one of my Monday day in the lives, our students have an hour delayed start so that teachers can have their PLC meetings in the morning for an hour. So I am here quite a bit early. Um, so I'm going to get some stuff done just around the classroom, things that I didn't quite get finished up on Friday. And then, um, yeah, we're going to start our meeting. So I will take you guys along. I do want to show you guys my fun shirt today. So here's my shirt. So um, TI Calculator provides a bunch of different SVG files. Um, and I have made pretty much every single one of their shirts. I love it. I wear a mask shirt every Monday and on Instagram, if you guys don't follow me, you should. It is, and I'll put the link in the description below, but I am Mrs. D underscore teaches underscore math on Instagram. And I post up a picture of my shirt every Monday for hashtag math shirt Monday. Um, it's just been a fun thing that I decided to do this year. And it's also spirit week. So, um, today is supposed to be culture day and the teachers in my group we decided that our culture this time around was going to be tired teachers so um hence the the messy hair i'm wearing leggings and sneakers and you know i mean yes normally i wear a t-shirt on mondays but yeah just totally casual today so anyway i'm going to uh, flip the camera around i'm going to get some stuff done and i will check in with you guys later So I was able to get a bunch of copies made. Here are copies um, of the next unit, at least get me through the middle to end of next week. So we are moving into a our volume and surface area unit. So I'm using the notes from All Things Algebra. I do change the headings, that way it matches all of the headings for all of the other assignments that my students are used to so that hopefully, you know, they can find things and keep things in the same place. So we've got our PLC meeting starting in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to work on getting my desk area cleaned up a little bit. I do have, let's see, today I'm teaching two geometry classes. So uh, my geometry kids are doing an introduction to the solids unit today. And I love starting this unit out by having them watch Flatland. So if you haven't seen it, it's a great, it's 35 minutes. So it's super short. And just a great way to introduce a 3D solid. So I will leave a link in the description below of for a copy of this movie. Seriously, check it out if you haven't. It's fantastic. There's a lot of great math puns in there. So we're going to do that. And then I have a bunch of big solids that we're just going to talk about and talk about how to classify. You know, they know pyramid, they know prism. But now we're going to talk rectangular prism, triangular prism, you know, all of the different being more specific. So that's what we're going to do there. And then in pre-calculus, we are moving on to three variables systems today. I love teaching this stuff. So um, yeah, that's my plan today. So I'm going to turn this off and get some stuff together for my meeting and I will catch up with you guys later. Our meeting's just finished. Kids are coming in here any minute now. So I have to go out to my hall due day. Um, I do want to show you guys I got a big box here from this company looking to, you know, involve more STEM into the classrooms and I signed up for a few of their different kits. So I'll have to open this later and see what's in it and see if there's stuff that I can hopefully use with some of my classes. So that's one difference. We can see that we only have one base. What's the other difference between our pyramid and our prism? Your triangular faces. Yes. So every pyramid, it doesn't matter the shape of the base. And unfortunately, I only have two. But even if it had a, a pentagon for a base or a hexagon for a base, my faces are going to be triangles. So that's important to remember for a pyramid is that we have one base and then the faces are going to be triangles. All right, what's this thing called? Like a pyramid, or it's technically a cone, but it falls under the pyramid category. Okay, so can somebody tell us why does this technically fall under the pyramid category? Okay. So we really have two different types of shapes. We have prisms, 
we have pyramids, right? Within the prisms, we have classifying by their base, and then we have our cylinders. So with our pyramids, what would I call this pyramid right here? Cubic pyramid? Not a cubic, because cubic is three-dimensional. Square pyramid. So we've got to use the two-dimensional for the base. So with our base is square, so a square pyramid. So um, substitution, right, going to be the best method to use for this. So we know looking at this, I know what y equals. y equals all of this right here. So we can substitute that in for y. So we're going to have negative x plus our y, which is x squared minus 8x plus 5, and that equals negative 3. Okay, so we've done the substitution part. Now what are we going to need to do to start solving this? Combine like terms and set it equal to zero, all right? So you can do, if you need to do that in a couple of steps, you can do that, you can do that in one step. So we're going to wind up with x squared minus 9x plus 8 equals zero, I think. Yep. Okay, let's go over what to do. So I need to get one of these equations to say either x equals or y equals, which is going to be the easier equation as much as we don't necessarily like it. The top one. All right, so get this set to either x or y equals. All right, so let's just say I'm going to get y equals. What would I do if I wanted to say y equals? Divide by x. So this new equation, y equals 4 divided by x. Now, is that going to be any different if I wanted to solve for x instead? No, it would just be x equals 4 divided by y, right? And we would substitute that in for x instead of y. So if I substitute this in for y, I'm going to have x squared plus, in parentheses, 4 divided by x squared, and then it equals 8. So we have a four answers for this problem. And just to give you an idea, because you're not necessarily familiar when you're looking at these equations, this is a circle, not a circle, um, but where our four solutions come from. So, Bobo Gadget you Desmos. So the red is the first equation, the blue the second equation, so we can see where our four different solutions come from. Two class periods down, I am now on my plan period. So a few things that I'm gonna be working on, the copies that I made before school today, I need to get those hole punched and then I need to get those organized, sorted so that I have them and can easily find them when I need them this week and next week. And then I'm gonna unbox the big box that I got and see what sort of goodies I got. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here's the box that I got. It is massive, so I did cut it open. So let's go ahead and see what I've got. I know this is an interesting camera angle. Um, so I've got a folder in here that looks like it's got some of the information. So this is from Engineering Tomorrow. Okay, so it looks like I've got a set that's got some hot glue, some scissors, a Sharpie ruler, um, hot glue gun. That's really exciting. I've got some of these sets here. It looks like for a, um, a different lab, maybe electricity or a circuit lab. So I've got, it looks like six of those to do a lab with. And I've got a kit to do this paper airplane project. So I'll have to look and see what all is in here. I'll do that after I unbox everything got another one of the um, hot glue gun sets. I've got several kits for a bridge project. So, and I've got, this looks like it goes along with the paper airplane for the aerodynamics. So I've got some stuff in here for that. that. So it looks like two, four, six. I've got six of each of these different sets. So I know that I went online and I looked at some of the projects and decided, oh, these sounded like ones that I might be able to do in some of my classes. I don't remember what they were. Um, I'll have to look and I will leave information in the description below with what all I ordered with the information for the labs for these. Um, but I'm excited to see if maybe towards the end of the year we can incorporate some of these fun projects in my classes.
All right, so I just got all of my paper copies for geometry hole punched and sorted. So I have a video on this. I will leave that in the uh, descri description below, but this is how I organize all of my paper copies for geometry because I teach four different sections of geometry, two on my blue days, two on my gold days. Having everything organized here really helps. I do have drawers for pre-calc and for quantitative reasoning as well. And so I just, typically it's Fridays when I I do this Fridays or Mondays early in the morning I'll make all of the copies that I need for the week and then I'll sort them in here as to when I'm teaching so on Tuesday I can just go in I can grab all of the papers that are in the stack and then I know this is all that I'm going to use now I did copy a little bit extra so this is for the following week so if it's for the following week I will just put it face down in there and so then I know okay I don't need to use that one I can just grab everything else so I have all my copies sorted and um, yeah, ready to go for the week, which is a great feeling. I don't have to worry about, shoot, I forgot to make copies. I know everything is right here for me. So my plan period is almost over. Actually, my plan period and lunch fall right in with each other. Normally, I separate my plan and my lunch time. Today, I was really hungry, so I just ate as I worked. And so I've got my last geometry class coming up, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to watch Flatland, and then we're going to talk about classifying solids. Is this a prism? No. All right, what do we call it? A cylinder. But is a cylinder a prism? No. No, why not? Okay, well, let's see. Let's go with this one. Do we have two bases? Yeah. My faces, are they rectangular? No. No, really? What happens if I, I can't obviously do that on this one, but what happens if I opened up my cylinder? What is that? I mean, this wrapped right around it, right? What is that shape right there? Hmm. Rectangular faces? Is that a rectangle? So does it match the definition of prism? Do we have two bases? Yep. And we have a crack in it, which is great. Um, do we have a rectangular face? I mean, it's plural, but uh, could it just have one face? Yeah. So a cylinder is a type of prism. My day is over. It's just a couple minutes before four. I am going to work on getting my room picked up so that I can get out of here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along more with me as a secondary math teacher, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but you can hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.